excitement. It's amazing, pride. Friends. Ohio. I, I can't really think of anything else except of Ohio. Amazing. Rock stars. Bond is the, the biggest word that I would use. It's, uh, it's very, very special. Passion. Pride. One of a kind, it's just unique. Um, it's part of you. The Marching 110 have a profound impact on Ohio University's campus. They're exciting and they're everywhere. Like everywhere you turn, there's the 110. Overall, it's the dancing. I just love the 110. They're so spirited. Yeah, I think it's important. Uh, a lot of times the music gets uh, everyone going. It's, uh, it's upbeat, so it makes everyone smile when it gets on. You can just tell that you know people love the 110 and just owe you in general when they come out in the field because everybody, especially during football games, everybody starts standing up and gets crazy. The campus loves their band, but underneath the excitement on Saturdays, there's a rich history and a dedication for perfection. In doing this documentary, you may appreciate what they do, but the average person, they just know they're great. to look at the Marching 110 and assume they've always stomped across the field with Ohio strewn across their chest, blasting pop hits and breaking it down on the field. But the early era was not as showy. Ivy League look um, in, um, in the uh, mostly the 60s and that was a green suit blazer, um, uh, a skinny tie, um, kind of again that collegiate look and gray slacks. Got a call in 66 from a, from a back in the days when they could call you and say, would you like this job? Gene became um, overall in charge, and that's when he, he really instituted the, the sweeping changes. The first thing to go for the new band were the old Ivy League uniforms. In their place, the Big Ten style uniforms you see today were introduced, and Threlkill designed them selectively. If you look at the uniform closely, I, I did a lot of things on purpose. The uniform that I designed, and I have the same one here at Oklahoma, was you get in from the back and your roommate zips it in. The one thing that bothered me when I, first, when I went to Ohio U as a GA, we'd go to ball games and the band would get in the stands and the guys would take the ties and they'd undo this and they'd, they got in and they zipped it up the back. Well, they're not going to undo it. Number two, he um, changed the music style to be very pop-oriented music. Um, you think if you look through the recordings, you'll see that things change pretty drastically from the, the kind of old fair, lots of marches that typical bands, again, in colleges would do kind of uninspired. What I wanted to do was, number one, make the band enjoyable for the, for the band members. And number two, I wanted to appeal to the student body. Very importantly, wanted the fight song and the alma mater to be revised. So John Higgins did all of that, those important things for us. Here's the tune. I want a fanfare to it. I want a, a low brass lead. I want this is, I want a modulation in the middle. And, and I told him what I wanted and uh, that's what we got. Of course, the other thing that Thrill Kill did was to um, remove women from the band. When Thrill Kill announced his changes, they were not exactly received warmly. Initially, outrage. Um, initially, when all of these things started to be, you know, shared with the media, he um, he shared that that the uniform was going to change. Immediately, you know, the the, um, the post, as it's wont to do, jumped all over him and the band. That here here they um, here the band is changing what they called a, a unique look, which was that Ivy League suit blazer look. Well, that was no more unique to Ohio University than leaves on the trees. And my intent was to go out and teach marching band. Then he kicked women out of the band, and I went to him and I said, "What about me?" I want to teach music, I want to teach band. How am I going to know how to do a band program and you don't have women? Boy, I got ripped. I mean, the, the Post just really let me have it. They had full page things of the twirlers coming down the street and the, over the top it said total asininity. One of the articles was called Showmen or Chauvinists um, that kind of, you know, De defines that sign of the times as well that 
um, it was an unpopular decision. Thrill Kill caught Flack for his decision, and he knew that his new band needed to blow the crowd away if they wanted to survive. They knew that they were under the gun that before that first performance. They knew that everyone wanted them to fail. I put the drum line out in the new uniform and the cat call started and the students started letting us have it. And I thought, oh, please, Lord, let's, let's don't go down this road. He told them, you know, that first note of, of, the, of pregame is gonna define what we're doing. And if you don't make it work, then it's all kind of, it's gonna fall on our face. The drum line started and the, the guys ran from the, behind the stadium. And I had made the arrangement that they play of stand up and cheer. I had had it done and it had the fanfare. And the, about the first four notes of that fanfare, the band popped the horns up and hit those first, and all of a sudden it was like, wow. From the first note, of the new fanfare, the fanfare for Stand Up and Cheer that they do now, uh, that controversy was gone. The band was a hit, and all the negative press Thrill Kill received died down. However, over time, his opinion began to soften. At the time I made the change, it was right for me, because I, I don't know how I put this, but I was young and full of vinegar, and by God, I was right. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. I think our areas of sensitivity always change as times change. His area of sensitivity grew as our society sensitivity grew. Would I do that again? And I'm not so sure I would. He sat down and had the dialogue because of the local media. He said, I can't believe that I did that. I wouldn't do that today. Despite the absence of women still being a point of contention for Thrill Kill, his marching men of Ohio continued to evolve, thanks to a drum major named David Fowler. And of course the dancing sort of tiptoed in in the, uh, in the late 60s with uh, Dave Fowler, who was the second drum major, a terrific guy, but he just couldn't stand still. Dancing was kind of a part of what I felt we needed to do to win people over. So Thrill Kill approached Fowler to ask him to design a dance routine with one condition. The rule was, Dave, if you can teach me, if I can do it, then we'll, we'll teach it to the band. If it's too, if I can't do it, mm -mm. The band debuted their dance to the now 110 classic original, Ain't Been Good, and ever since, the 110 has been dancing away. Thrill Kill left the band job for Oklahoma in 1972 and was succeeded by Thomas Lee for a short two-year tenure. After Lee, the legendary Ronald Sacchiarelli was hired and held his post for 17 years. It was under his tenure that women were readmitted into the band amongst his many other accomplishments. Upon Sacchiarelli's retirement, Sylvester Young held the post until 1996 before the present director, Richard Sook, took the helm. The band's look is very much the same it was when Thrill Kill put his stamp on the band and the modern style of the 110 can be attributed to the bold, highly disputed changes made by the first conductor of the Marching Men of Ohio. Standing heels together, toes apart at a 45 degree angle, um, back straight, shoulders back, um, and chest out, head held high, but not like straight up in the air, like your chin parallel to the ground, and your instrument, like your hands, your hands and fists, like your right hand and a fist, with your left hand cupped over it, right in front of like your belly button, and but not too far out, but not too far, like not too far in. It's details, it's all the details. But it's not just the details. It's the dedication, the discipline, the difference. It's all part of what they do. They taught you discipline from day one. The first thing they taught you was when the field commander talks, nobody talks. When Dr. Sook talks, nobody talks. You gotta be dedicated. Uh, that's one of the big things I learned. It's really different because, like we always joke, we're like, like even the most athletic people that come into the 110 still sometimes have an issue with it because it's nothing your body's really ever trained for. Um, even in a sport, you're never marching around and extending your calves and landing with your toes first. And so you have to really practice it. And the first couple weeks are always pretty special. Have you ever been to a 110 rehearsal? I've never. I've never been to a college band rehearsal that has discipline like they do. The commitment starts in August on the first day of band camp, and it goes nonstop, day after day, week after week.
throughout the season. Monday, Tuesday, and hopefully not into Wednesday, but sometimes into Wednesday, those are very separate. It's like, here's marching time, here's music time, here's marching time, here's music time. And eventually by like late Wednesday and then Thursday, it's let's play this song real quick, now go march it. Play the song, go march it. Play the song, go march it. I have to work very hard. I mean, there's a, uh, there's a level of expectation when you join the band that uh, you give 110%, and I think they realize that the first few days of camp. You do it until you get it done, and sometimes that means a convo, dance rehearsal, working on the dance routine on a Thursday night at 10 o'clock. And um, people probably don't know that, you know. They just see the band on Saturday and think it just kind of falls together. It truly is amazing to see what we can accomplish in a week given we have a new show to do for this new home game and we only have a week to do it in. So let's get started. Let's go. It's very high energy. It's very draining. It's very hard. Part of what they do isn't exactly typical for a college band. Actually, a big part of what they do is extremely unique. Anyone who has any knowledge of the Marching 110 knows that they can dance. One thing that's a really like, important part of the 110's uh, style and tradition is that every show we do a dance chart where we, instead of marching formations, we're in a block, we groove during the song, and then in the middle of the song there's a drum break, we put the instruments down and we dance, and that's something that we've done since 1967. It, I shouldn't say it's unique for every college. There are still ban there are bands that do that today. There are college bands. I don't think to the degree that OU does. I mean, every halftime show that they do, in Peden Stadium has a dance routine. Most schools, it's more of a specialized thing. For instance, you've got that, you know, those viral videos with Gungam Style this year. Thriller, I mean, the Michael Jackson Thriller dance. If you're playing Thriller, that's a built-in kind of thing. Schools aren't looking to do that every home game. It's very challenging, it's hard. Um, it takes a lot of time, and a lot of schools don't dedicate that time like OU does. Dance committee uh, happens anytime there's a new dance that we have to come up with. We invite any member of the band that, that wants to come. We invite the whole band. Usually about 12 or 13 people show up. Uh, we just split them off into groups of two, groups of four, whatever. Have people come up with some ideas to show us and we keep what we like and we alter what we don't. Myself and the other two dance commanders, Kyle Likens and Nick Merton, uh, are in charge of coming up with the, with the, the choreography for those dances and teaching it to the band. The identity of the 110 reaches far beyond the notes played and the moves shown on the field. The identity exists within the very fabric on their back. Because when we put on that uniform, we represent so much more than just ourselves as individuals. Here we are, what, 46, 47 years later, they're wearing the same uniform, the, the same hat, the same uniform, the same cape. Band jackets are identical. We uh, made the change to ours where it's black except for that white field with Ohio. And the band hasn't changed the uniform style. They've bought new uniforms every 10 to 20 years, but no one knows it because they look exactly the same. I designed that uniform so that the kid, the, the guys look great in it from the time they stepped out of the dorm room till the time they stepped back in the dorm room. I bet you never see any band member walking across campus with his coat here and just a t-shirt. There's no swearing on the field or in any part of your uniform. After a week of preparation, it's time to suit up for the big show. You know, our job, our number one job is to go to the football games and entertain the crowd and, you know, pump up the football team. That's our, those are our jobs. And so if we're doing those jobs, people can tell. In football games especially, I think that's when we're at our, uh, our best, is when we're in the stands and we can uh, cheer on our team um, and also hopefully ignite the crowd and, and become a unified uh, cheering section for the team. Being better than the best requires a certain level of confidence. Oh yeah, very cocky during every performance. They teach us from day one there's a certain swagger that we have to have when we march and. I think that gives us a little bit of attitude during the games, especially during halftime. I mean, the, the style is our style. It's our brand. It's what's, you know, when you've got a winning formula, you don't change it. I think there has to be a certain swagger when a group takes the field. Um, I don't think it should manifest itself in the form of cockiness, but just in the form of confidence. The 110 can get into the holiday spirit a little earlier than most on homecoming. 
Am I allowed to say Christmas? <laughs> we, amongst ourselves, we we always uh, call it Christmas because <laughs> there's just a joke. It's Homecoming is the most wonderful time of the year. Christmas is a time where family gets together, they celebrate, you know, they tell stories, you know, they, you know, enjoy each other's company, they have big meals, you know, they gather around, all that stuff. So really the only thing to describe homecoming other than homecoming is Christmas. For the band, homecoming is a time to learn from those that came before, and those that came before show up in droves. We're expecting 300 plus alumni this year. Coming up Union Street, at one point in Union Street, it took like four minutes for the whole band to get, we had something short of 80 trombones in the thing. It's all this legacy that comes back, all these past field commanders and dance commanders and staff members, and they all get to mull around and talk with us and just share stories. I think um, the 110 in general gets a good reception, and, and alumni, I think people are amazed that we can do it every year. The 110's Christmas is an all-day grind that starts early in the morning. There is a parade to march in, after all. And that turn onto Court Street, you just look up, and you see just like floods of people all up and down. People start screaming. We play stand up and cheer, and they're just ridiculous, and it's semi-riot-like. Most of them are out of breath. Some of them wish they had oxygen to suck on, especially since they changed the parade route. Following the parade, the band makes its way over to Peden Stadium and gets to march onto the field once again. It's a shot back in time. You put, I, I have my, I have a drum at home. It's at my mom's house. Um, uh, every year that I come back for homecoming, I get the drum out and I'm playing the music that to the, to the well, not to the large degree. We are playing the music that at some point in my career we played when I was in band. As soon as the band marches between the painted lines, the nostalgia is immediate. In a typical year, coming back as an alum, it's a rush. I mean, you feel like a rock star, you know, and, and, and when you're out there on the field and you see the thousands of students standing up and cheering for the OU marching band and the OU alums, it's an absolute rush. I thought we were just gonna go out there and play stand up and cheer with a bunch of old alumni, but they're out there doing a dance like we're doing. They still got it after. 40 some years for some of them. It's that snap back in time that when the crowd starts screaming and the announcers using really the same kind of announcement they used when you were a band, that whole stretching out ladies and you know, and that, that dramatic style, that's, that's when things really get real. Once they've harnessed the adrenaline, it's all muscle memory. We don't even have to look at music. It's like I said, marching pregame, it's ingrained in our heads, it's just gonna come right back and you know that song and you're back to being a student here on campus. This alumni band today will play music that I played in the mid 70s. I didn't have to learn it to become part of this band. You know, we've got the same jackets, the same uniforms, the same instrumentation. The band always celebrates homecoming, but this year it also assembled to celebrate the life of Mr. S, Ronald Sacchiarelli, director of the Marching 110 from 1973 to 1992, who passed away in early 2012. It was wonderful and rough at the same time, because you, you never not you, you never stop celebrating Mr. Saccarelli. You you just didn't. You, you get you get two band people together, and Mr. Saccarelli will be the topic of conversation. So it was for me because it was so emotional. A lot of it I actually don't remember because it was just such a blur, and I was too busy crying. Saccarelli was the first to introduce the motto better than the best ever. His band had to outdo their best every time. No matter how good you just did that, you can do it a little bit better. And, and just kept pressing us, and he was always big and saying, hey, can I have five more minutes of your time? Mr. S's famous motto became the theme for homecoming for the entire university. He wasn't just a major figure for Ohio University, though. He was a father figure and a mentor. He was amazing. He was um, pretty much, uh, he was a father figure to a lot of people. He was a uh, mentor. He was, um, he was just an incredible person. I remember having difficulties just with, uh, maybe it was a class I was having a hard time with, or quite frankly, having a hard time with my girlfriend at that point in time, who he knew, who I later married and, and is, is with us today. Um, but I could go to him and talk to him on that level. Saccarelli built a band that he loved, with students he loved working with. You know, Mr. Saccarelli used to always say that a special kind of kid comes to Ohio University, but then an even more special kid joins this band, you know, and he said it every year, but you knew he meant it. A special kind of person creates a special kind of bond. 110 friendships don't just last while members are in band. 
They last a lifetime. And seeing old friends is just another part of what makes homecoming so special. And when we see each other, it's just like the old times. You know, I don't see uh, people that are this age, about 50 years old. What I see is those same 19 and 20 year olds that I marched with back in the day. A um, little bit grayer, a little bit more wrinkled, uh, but we're back just doing the same thing we did before. The stories just continue on. For 110 members, young and old, age is just a number. We all are very linked, and it doesn't really matter who your director was. I mean, we all love Mr. Socrelli because he was our director, but they love Professor Sook just as much as others loved Professor Young, and uh, it just matters that you were in the band. There's a very special bond. Um, I can connect with students that are 18 years old or 19 years old that are here on campus, and we have a commonality in the fact that we're in the marching band. All of a sudden, once you start playing music and marching, then you're you're all the same age. The alums cherish their glory days, but they also couldn't be prouder of the band currently in place. In some places it's um, kind of looked down upon because the alumni come back and say, well, that's not as good as when I was in band. That's not the case here. We, we all care about the current band and try to support them. I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very, very proud. I mean, you know, everybody takes the band, each director takes the band from where it is and takes it to another level. And Mr. Saccarelli did that. Dr. Sook has done an outstanding job of that also. I mean, I'm very proud of what they're doing and the notoriety they've, they've received and the things they're doing. They're doing a great job and they, they, do, us, they do us proud. The first thought that comes to mind in terms of the Marching 110's national profile is viral videos. Party Rock Anthem, over 8 million views. Gangnam Style, over 12 million views. Kind of, it's almost a precedent we've set, like we have to do it now. Very wisely choosing contemporary music again, Party Rock Anthem, and then this year, Gangnam Style. Um, they know that something good's gonna come from that. You know, in a, in a tongue-in-cheek kind of way, there's a little bit of jealousy. You know, when, when the first viral video came out last year, and uh, we said, you know, we've been doing this for years, but of course, when we were in the band, the internet didn't exist. I mean, I can't tell you how many people here have talked to us about the YouTube thing with their high, high band. Uh, that's, it's just neat. We just, we still feel a part of it. I think the university knows how great we are, but I think these videos are a real, really interesting way to get our name out into the world. Uh, I mean, having that kind of publicity is, is you know, from a pragmatic sense, it's wonderful, right? Because it draws attention to your institution in a very positive way. Um, it gets people excited who might not know about Ohio University. It sees, you know, the kind of things that this institution produces, great students, great organizations. Yet the national profile of the band began way before the age of YouTube. On October 28, 1976, the Marching 110 became the first marching band ever to perform in Carnegie Hall in New York. In 1993, the Marching 110 traveled to Washington, D.C. to play in the inaugural parade for Bill Clinton. And in 2005, the Marching 110 once again performed in New York City at the 29th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and was the lead band of the parade. While the band has made noise on a national level, what makes the band special is the relationship with the campus of Ohio University. I remember, I was walking across campus and I was standing on the corner of Court Street with my wife and and uh, this girl and her boyfriend came up and, and one of the guys in the band jacket walked by and the girl's boyfriend started to kind of, hey, there's a band, man, you know, and she hauled off and hit him. She says, you don't make fun of our band. I work at Baker and I saw this guy walking around in this like long sleeve t-shirt today that had our, that looked like the front of our uniform, had the, the Ohio across the chest, the, uh, the diagonal. And I was like, what is that? I want it. I don't know where that came from, but I really want it. And somebody's like, oh, that's the Greek life. That's the Greek Life shirt. That's what they decided on. That's what Greek Life decided they wanted their shirts to be, is the 110. I think the unique relationship with the 110 in our campus is it's, they're, they're very beloved. I mean, the 110 is something that um, students embrace, the faculty, the staff embrace. I think our band, uh, our relationship with the university is just one of the best I've ever seen. In some ways, the 110 is our, um, I don't want to call it a mascot, but they, they really speak publicly to who we are as an institution, I think. Nothing epitomizes the bond between the band and the campus more than the bond the band shares with the athletic department. Yeah, we consider the Marching 110 as part of our team. You know, a lot of times, you know, the band members are the loudest people cheering. If you go to a, a football game, for example, you just see how important they are to the pageantry of the event. Uh, they're an important reason why people want to come and be a part of the whole festivities of the day. 
Uh, they're very important to our team. We legitimately love to watch the games. I mean, I think it's great. Anytime, you know, uh, people are cheering for what we're doing on the field, it's a, you know, it's a great feeling for us. And then in, in return, I think, you know, there's a mutual respect between the 110 and the football team. And, you know, our guys are truly appreciative of what the band does. We get so into it and we really enjoy being there. And, and the football team can sense that. It's, it's something you can, you can just, it's, it's there, you know it's there, you can feel it. And they, and you can tell that they really respect that and they, they appreciate that, which makes them want to give us some credit and some, you know, some accolades. And it's just this, you know, mutual respect thing that occurs. To have the Marching 110, the best band in the land, I don't think there's a, there's a school in the country that has a better band. I wouldn't trade our band for anybody. The football team will do this like, uh, like, you got my back, I got your back, you got my back, I got your back, like, to each other. And when we were down at Marshall, when we went down to Marshall, we started chanting that to them. <laughs> In the fourth quarter, the band was cheering that they had our back, and and being in the hostile environment uh, like at Marshall, when you know majority of the crowd's against us, and we have our OU section, and then you can hear the band over everybody yelling. We just started chanting like, "We got your back! We got your back! We got your back!" It was this, it's like energy that you could just taste. It was great. Great music and fun doing it. I think speaks to a little bit about what it means to be a Bobcat. The Marching 110 is the most exciting band in the land but that persona is grounded deeply in the past. Tradition is the 110. There's almost nothing we do without doing, without considering any aspect of tradition. I think a lot of it's tradition. I, I think that's, that's what I feel good about. That I, that's what I started. And it's not only what I started 40, what, 47 years later, it's what I started and what they've maintained. It's like Rick says now, I don't dare change that uniform. He couldn't change it if he wanted to. Uh, I think they were so smart to keep the traditions going, to keep the dancing and the music and stuff like that, because it would be awfully easy for somebody to come in and say, we're going to go back to classical, and Sousa and marches and things like that. Now, that, would be, that would be terrible. Sure, there have been minor changes here and there, a slight update to the uniform, a change in the marching mechanics, and new directors all the way. However, the 110 that we know today maintains because of the students and their commitment to the program. I don't think any of the directors could have changed what we started because the kids in the band won't let it happen. I just know what kind of pride those kids have. I mean, this year's 110 to the kids that are in that band. It's the best 110 there's ever been. And you couldn't, you couldn't tell them that the band in 70 something or other was, well, they're not gonna buy that. With a common tradition, a common bond emerges and makes the 110 truly special. I never knew that stand up and cheer could be a love song until I heard my son play it. We have things in common that most dads and sons don't have. Uh, their commitment to, uh, you know, performing, uh, you know, entertainment, and uh, just family. That's the biggest thing. That's really what makes it special. It's such a strange combination of those, those things. I kind of smile every year that I see a flyer come from OU or a newsletter come from OU uh, or an invitation to homecoming because as God is my witness, there's a picture of the band somewhere. That really makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you started something that maybe you, it was good that you started.